Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Krebs Coho with my collaborator Ryan back at his helm. The right hand man is finally back yet again. <laughs> Ryan has been quite busy with um, a lot of his work, his daily personal live life, should I say. And it is very good that he is back in the show, in the limelight. So if you have been all missing Ryan's voice, I will give you an opportunity to hear that just now. Hey guys, how are you doing? <laughs> Ryan seems kind of glum. <laughs> but anyway, okay, so as I was promising for the last week or so, there was meant to be a a um, a replay featuring the Vampire Half-Track from the PE, and this time around, I know I've been giving Ryan a lot of flack and been posting his losses and my wins, so let's try and reverse that this time around, and this is going to be me losing against Ryan's um, Vampire Half-Track, not just his Vampire Half-Track, but a lot to expect from that, so Ryan, are you ready to get this on the road? I uh, sure am. Okay, so we're at the 5 second mark, and we are starting in 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Okay, so we are jumping straight into this. Um, I'm going to be playing as the Americans this time around, and Ryan, my opponent, is going to be focusing on his Panzer Elite, hence the Vampire Half-Track that we will be seeing quite shortly, and hopefully this isn't going to be spoiling anything for you guys, but um, I'll actually let Ryan to let Ryan explain uh, what, what have we seen in the 2.602 changes in terms of the Vampire Half-Track. Well, the, the Vampire Half-Track, first of all, doesn't cost fuel anymore, um, which is definitely kind of handy in the whole scheme of things. And it cloaks, which the, the cloak makes it just a, a brutal uh, tool to use. It takes a lot of time and effort. We actually played a game um, before this using the Vampire Half-Track, and I couldn't find yours anywhere. I just couldn't find it. It's actually quite kind of funny, and um, just the Vampire Half-Track is just so hard to find, and as you were saying, Ryan, I mean, the whole important thing about the Vampire Half-Track um, pre-2.602 is just the fact that you couldn't even camouflage it, and that would just made it so difficult to even find a use for it. I mean, it was so such a weak vehicle, obviously it had great potential, but you just couldn't, you just couldn't keep it away from the enemy finding it, and just the fact that it's uh, camouflage alone just helps so so much the fuel also helps as well just because if you think about it a lot of these early um, buildings for the Panzer Elite, the T1, T2 always uh, the vehicles always cost the um, fuel on it so by having that extra fuel that you save by getting the Vampire Half Track you know it's gonna help a lot in terms of uh, teching up you know yeah absolutely and, and the lack of, of fuel on any of the tier one vehicles really makes a big difference you know the munitions half track and and the vampire half track both um it allows you to use them without delaying your teching you might have less pgs on the field but you've got some utility vehicles there you definitely got like so many more pos uh, possibilities of doing different things now i mean with that munitions half track you can actually get down some uh pretty cool neat stuff and just the vampire half track so it's just so nice to see in 2.602 just just you have so many new opportunities of doing all these new strategies i mean in pre 2.602 we just saw a lot of the same standard pe strategies um, rushing for armored cars and uh, just a few infantry half tracks but this is really going to open up the window what we just are a bit lacking of at the moment is just people finding that potential and trying to make the most out of it and I think we'll see more of that, particularly after this uh, Games Replays tournament that's coming up here soon. Um, we will get a chance to see um, less of me not fighting behind cover and uh, <laughs> more of other people actually, you know, trying things and messing around. <laughs> Brian, have you actually signed up for that uh, tournament? No, I haven't. It's going to be really tough for me um, during that particular time period, but I am hoping to be able to cast some of the games that come through that. Yeah, that's kind of unfortunate, because um, as I was saying just at the beginning of this replay, you were actually working a lot over the weekend, um, or should I say the entire week, and you know, 40 hour weeks are hectic enough, but you were saying something like going up towards 120 hours or something like that, right? Oh, I've certainly done that in, in a given week. <laughs> that is just absolutely crazy, so it's totally understandable if you might have a difficult uh, time 
of being able to do that. Um, I think I might actually give that up a shot. Um, considering that the tournament of my own is going to be coming out sometime after the game replays tournament, you know, if I somehow won that, although very unlikely, I know there's a lot more better players, if I somehow won that, I would actually be very tempted to put that prize up for the own, re um, own uh, tournament. Yeah, well, and it's it's one of those things. Uh, what you see going on right here is pretty much um, I've got you cut off in the game itself. I, not to detract that, but I'm stalling. Uh, I'm really just stalling. I'm getting the vampire half track built, um, getting my stuff reinforced. I'm trying to flank around and trying to keep you from holding a fuel advantage, um, and uh, so that once I I drop that vampire half track because now the fuel has been decapped. It's been decapped after you captured this strategy point over on the left-hand side. And so with with that particular capping order, if I can get the vamp half-track over into that sector, when you recap that fuel, it now drains half of that fuel. That's the beauty about the vampire half-track. And this is one of the most annoying things about the games that we were playing. It's just you're so you're so aggressive, and that's a that's a very good thing. Uh, personally, I find it very annoying how aggressive you are because you were just constantly cutting me off, and it's just usually I like my sort of comfort and knowing that my opponent won't cut me off. But obviously, when you're playing more expert and higher tier games. Um, uh, such as this one, you're, you gotta expect that you're gonna be cut off. And this is just me trying to connect my territories back together with what I can. I've got my riflemen just using their advantage of their capping rate just to regain some of that territory. Um, fortunately, I did actually manage to chase away some of your Panzer Grenadiers. They do take a lot of damage from those bars, that's for sure. Well, the bars were really scary at this point. I, you know, I mean, once you get up close with those bars until you're really prepped for it with your PG tech, and I'm a little behind, you know, I was floating up about 100 fuel right as that hit, um, based more on the manpower and everything that we were going back and forth, and uh, I'm just getting tier 3 up right now. And so, uh, you know, that that's going to affect how this all kind of plays out in the end. And part of that's just because this isn't a really solid strat yet for using the vamp half track. There's no specific build order. We were just fooling around. No, we definitely were fooling around. And the thing is about the vampire half track. I mean, it, it can't do much. <laughs> really, it can't do much in terms of fighting your opponent. I mean, it doesn't even have a gun at all. But the thing about the vampire half track, you sort of have to think about it in the long run. I mean, the short term is yeah, you will be spending a bit of manpower on. Um, something that doesn't do anything really, but the long-term benefits, I mean, cutting off your opponent's uh, supply of their fuel, their munitions, their pop cap, I mean, that is absolutely devastating in the long run. That's going to severely um, stop my teching from even going about, and that's really important, especially for the Americans, because, you know, they really need to get their fast M8, for example. Not so much in my position, because I do have bars out, but that, again, stops my teching. It stops me from getting those AT guns, after all. Yeah, and what you see here is, uh, you know, these sandbags that you build outside of my base are going to are going to give me a, a, you know, definitely a problem um, as this goes on. But it, it's kind of going to be a double-edged sword because of the vet that you feed me uh, during this process. Really, I should be uh, I should be looking for defensive ops at this point. I was focusing more on getting an armored car up and ready. This is sort of and funny because in uh, one of our little engagements just there, we had uh, I pushed you I pushed you back right to your base, and this is not the uh, last engagement. It was the one just before that, and I was just thinking to myself, you know, I managed to push Ryan right off the right off the map to his base basically, and I was thinking, okay, if I've got I've got quite a number of riflemen, so what I will do is set up a really defensive line right in front of Ryan's base, and. So I went immediately for the infantry doctrine there and got those defensive operations, and that's why I could get the get the little sandbags and the bar, barbed wire going about. The sort of difficult thing about this um, strategy is that basically my base is so far away, and when you're looking at a map like Longra, where there's hardly any buildings to put a forward HQ in, um, it becomes a really sort of difficult thing. Basically what you have to do in order to hold this front line, you have to uh, keep your men behind the sandbags at all times. You have to retreat, reinforce constantly. And it is a long, long journey to even get back to your front. 
Now, what are you sitting at for fuel right now, just out of curiosity? <laughs> this is a sort of funny thing. I've got 77 fuel in my deposit. However, if we're looking at my fuel rate, I only have a plus 15 at the moment. Right, and and even with it, just my my little one fuel point outside of my base, um, I'm running a plus 10. So, uh, you know, the vamp half track helped keep that, despite your superior map control, helped really keep me kind of in the game at this point. Because I went ahead and teched up to tier 4, um, kind of afraid that you would have had enough of a fuel advantage that, uh, you know, I'd be seeing some kind of uh, armored car coming out from you, a Greyhound or a T-17. Well, I mean, I just actually got the supply yard down, so that's, uh, hey, I'm not going to be getting a an armored car too fast. Um, the thing about the uh, Funk Wagon, the Vampire Half Track, is that, I mean, you did port in the corner, and it is down, so it is sucking my, my resources. However, you do have to put it in a certain order. Um, this is going to be sort of difficult for me to explain at the moment, but basically what you have to do is put the, put the uh, Vampire Half Track on a point that is earlier from other points that have been captured. So basically, you put it on a manpower point, which was captured after I had captured the uh, fuel points. So they were not effective, affected, but I did capture a third fuel point, which was a plus 10. So all in all, I should have plus 25 fuel going instead I've only got plus 21 at the moment. Right, it, it's not going to affect the fuel point that was outside of your base, but the two other fuel points on the east side map, and there's me just at not getting a, a squad out fast enough under your focus fire. Um, but the two eastern fuel points um, were capped after that particular strategic point, which is why you see that reduction in the value there. You're getting the plus five from your base, the plus five from outside your base, and then the uh, half of the two plus tens that you currently hold. I think the munitions are heavily affected as well. Um, I've got multiple different points, plus 10s, and all in all I've got 32 ammunition. Now that really comes down to placing the funk wagon just in the correct place. I mean, the manpower point was a pretty decent place because I'm not going to find that... Um, find that vampire half track so easily i mean my guys aren't even near there however i think if the vampire half track was possibly somewhere else nearer to one of the initial points that i captured it would be sucking a lot more of my resources um just one more thing i want to note is just the amount of mines that i've been placing down that's uh, another one of the beauty beauties about defensive operations is that you can put down all these mines the sandbags the barbed wire with your riflemen and just I'm trying to set up a very defensive line, just trying to prevent you from even doing anything. But the thing is, I mean, you're just constantly bringing back your Panzer Grenadiers. It's just non-stop, this cycle of Panzer Grenadiers just gaining your veterancy. Yeah, and I, I think the uh, the veterancy, particularly on the G43s, really goes a long way in this particular game. Um you know, again, I was worried, which is why you see, um, or you may not see, the uh, anti-tank half-track that's out there. Um, I really was worried about armored cars in general. We had a mine go off that took out one of my MP44 squads. It knocked out two guys uh, right in range of the bar squad, and the bar squad just finished them off before I could even get a retreat going. And... Uh, so, you know, I mean, there's definitely a lot of things that went on with this defensive line. Flanking around this right side really, I think, helped me um, in a couple of those engagements. And it's something that I was really trying to focus on, um, trying to keep you busy on that left-hand side so you didn't just move somewhere else, but also attempting to... Um, get around on this side so that I can make sure that, uh, you know, I can get past those sandbags and the mines that were over there because it's driving me nuts. Well, I think the uh, very, the very um, buggy thing about you that <laughs> sort of bugs me is just the fact how aggressive you are. I mean, I was really hoping you would have come around the right hand side. I mean, I was totally expecting that it could happen. However, I was sort of hoping it wouldn't. Just for the fact that I had about two riflemen just up at that uh, defensive line that I have. But really, two riflemen is not going to hold off your entire army. And this is what just happened. I had to retreat because you took the flank. You had the opportunity just to push me right off. And, uh, you know, I, I can't defend that. No way. Um, I also do have a medic station down right in the center of the map because I have invested heavily into my infantry. 
So just that medic station obviously is going to help me a lot with the, in the long term, especially uh, when there's going to be a, a, a Vampire half track down. Yeah, and I think uh, at this point, if you look over at the Vampire half track, if I'd have moved that just a little north past that wood pile, I, I think we're, uh, you know, it, there may be action going on elsewhere. In fact, I think there was. Um, but uh, it does get detected uh, relatively shortly here. And uh, and that's it's something that with a vampire half track positioning is important. You have to watch your positioning with it at yeah, all times. The... You just gotta put it somewhere where people don't realize where it's gonna be, and it's always about finding the the hardest place it could um, you could really imagine. Now the hardest place might not exactly be the. Um, the most obvious so you would sort of expect maybe a person would put the vampire half track in the say the corner of the map but actually the corner of the map is where I would look first because you know just uh, just the sort of typical things I would sort of expect somebody to do that but instead what uh, a sort of good thing to do is put it somewhere maybe in the middle of the you know the edge of the map really yeah and you see that that mine damaging the engine on this AT half track um, your T-17 positioning here was just really good, uh, you know, moving around behind that house, trying to keep it away from the AT half-track, um, it definitely kind of hurt me, um, as far as being able to take it out. <laughs> I did not actually see the light AT half-track crash on the mine, but after all, the engine is dead badly damaged. I do believe I tried to do something with the T-17 here, I was thinking maybe I could get in there and possibly take out your light AT half-track, but that does not seem the case. Instead, you've actually immobilized me entirely, and it's sort of funny just looking at how this T-17 could be immobilized. I mean, it still has its wheels going, but it still has its wheels intact. However, it's just, it just won't even move. <laughs> yeah, just spinning his wheels in the dirt at that point. But again, it's, it's going to be very hard, um, particularly uh, even at this range, which was a mistake to pull up that far instead of going south a little further. Um, to, to try and take out that T-17 with the AT half track. I was figuring maybe we might get there and now you're gonna push me off. <laughs> uh, once again, it's it, you know, it's it's a gamble and it's a mistake and it's one of those reasons that I am not that great at this game, but I enjoyed playing it. Oh, Ryan, come on. You are absolutely brilliant at this game, man. <laughs> you're so hard on yourself, aren't you? Um, the thing is, I'm not exactly sure how the white phosphorus rounds work. I know they stunned the... Um, stun vehicles and that's what was happening but as for a cover of smoke I was actually thinking well since there's gonna be white phosphorus rounds and it makes that big plume of smoke maybe that would actually decrease your accuracy and that was my thinking behind it and it did look like one of your shots missed as for if that's actually true or not if it keeps it on missing I'm not exactly sure but you know I had those riflemen closing in anyway and it was a very good opportunity to stun you keep you there until the um, until the riflemen can get in there yeah, and this is really where we start kind of a vet war um, in everything. We are we are beginning to play that, uh, you know, we're going to sit here. If you notice, I've got my uh, my MP44s up front um, just hosing that rifle squad down. I've got the two G43 squads plinking away at distance here. And, uh, you know, and now I'm on the other side of your cover, using your cover as you're trying to recover that bar. Um, it really was a good engagement for me because I was able to really keep those squads alive for long enough and focus enough firepower on them. Of course, this T-17, once again, it's still going to be kind of a pain in my ass. <laughs> of course it will be. Um, the thing is, I didn't actually realize those MP44s would have been so, so brilliant against my, my rifleman. I was at least thinking maybe the bars could, you know, do a bit more damage, but I mean, you, you weren't even being shredded apart. You were just absolutely fine. At this point in the game, I'm just thinking, okay, maybe the T-17s, if I get a few of them, they'll, um, they'll do a lot of damage to you. And I'm sort of chasing you right into your base. I was also thinking, I mean, if you get another light AT half track, no problem. I could easily, if I have two T-17s, that's going to be enough to take it out anyway. So what is this? This is, looks like some sort of artillery, and yes it is. It is my um, howitzer shoot coming down. That was not changed in 2.602. It is still called howitzer shoot. Yeah, and you see me uh, like calling lame, and it's it's not because of it, you know anything going on except for just pure luck. And Company Hero is is definitely driven on luck. 
Um, it, what happened was he called that in. I began to move my G43 squad over and uh, and then proceeded to still have them hit by the very first shell and knock out both guys. And I was disappointed. <laughs> yeah, no, that is that is the luck factor that comes down to it. But then again, you just it's just something you gotta deal with. Really, it's kind of unfortunate, but that's all that really happens. I think the I think the thing you've been really realizing with my play against you is that I love harassing you in your base. I just absolutely love putting down all these artillery strikes. Um, if you guys haven't noticed, if if you watch up some previous games of me and Ryan, it's just that I absolutely love dropping these artillery strikes on his base, uh, registered artillery, whatever possible, just to take out his re reinforcing units, really. But if you notice, one of the things that I'm doing is I'm Artillery specifically is ignoring the T-17s because I know they're not going to really be able to do a ton of damage inside of my base. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get um, the AT grenades upgrade, and uh, I'm just going to move out and kind of harass a little bit. I did some damage to his rifle squads earlier, so at this point I'm thinking, hey, um, I may as well get out. I'm, I'm not going to be paralyzed by T-17s. Oh, definitely. Um, your your vampire half track has not been even discovered yet. I do, if I do remember correctly in this game, I did have maybe an engineer squad or a rifleman squad just going around the map trying to look for it. I don't believe I'm actually looking for it at the moment because I noticed my uh, resources aren't that severely hampered for what I have on the map at the moment. However, I do only have 15 uh, fuel income, but that is after all with only two fuel points on the map. Let's see what's happening in my base. I do still have that motor pull, but really I don't have much in terms of my teching order. I have loads of riflemen back yet again at my defensive line, and I am building a howitzer in my base. Just because your Panzer Grenadiers just love combating me at my defensive line, and if they're going to be stationary like that, you know, I think a little bit of artillery barrages will definitely make them feel a bit better. And it's a good thing to notice, um, the AT grenades choice was really uh, kind of a good one on my part. Um, it, uh, it allowed me to uh, destroy that second T-17 as it was running around harassing the Panzer Grenadiers. The AT grenades now, when they hit a hull, they actually go off, which is a big help. And I get a Vet 2 rifle squad down here with that uh, MP44 squad. So, uh, you know, we're really getting some damage uh, from the Vet on the on the PGs and the uh, that particular war is a pretty tough one. I know, despite the fact that I have the veterancy on quite a number of my riflemen, they're still absolutely getting shredded apart by those by those <laughs> MP44s, and I absolutely love that retreating MP44 squad getting absolutely demolished. I mean, you were just talking about the uh, luck in this game, and that was just a perfect example of it. And there you go, you're mouthing off uh, random ar damn artillery. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I mean, at this point, I've got uh, I've had two squads go down to what I consider pretty stray shells, and. Uh, and it's, it's like, you know, that squad had just gotten the second defensive after pushing off, you know, those the <laughs> rifles that were up behind the sandbags. It was kind of disappointing because, uh, oh, you know, there's a lot of manpower investment in that, yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely frustrating, I could imagine that. Just uh, when you get that veterancy on your pa Panzer Grand Tiers, and considering just that the fact you have to earn your you earn your veterancy, it's not like it's not like the um, Vermont where you just purchase it, you lose it, you can still get it back again. I mean, you have to earn it the hard way, and when you just lose something like that, it's just so upsetting. But you know, the luck based as we uh, keep on going on about luck based sort of game. Um, I do have my engineers on the left hand side of the map, the western side, just capping away at the fuel point. I believe this might have been the squad that was just going about trying to see where that um, vampire half track of yours could have been. Yeah, and it was a it was a fairly um, you know one of the things with vampire half tracks. If you know the order in which your enemy capped the map, you can decap selective um, squads and or sectors rather not squads and uh if you decap him in the right order then as he retakes the field he's still only getting half and your vampire half track can sit in the same spot the entire time um you can see this g43 squad and the mp44 squad there to keep the rifles from rushing up the g43 squad um i believe that that squad's up to uh 33 maybe even 34 um Infantry kills and a light vehicle kill, they have been absolutely crucial to keeping me in this game.
Oh, and, well, that's how you have the uh, the event three on them. So that is why they're absolutely shooting like mad, and their accuracy is all out of the roof at the moment. That is how I'm just losing my riflemen so quickly. I mean, especially these unvetted ones. They're hardly they're hardly doing anything as I expected. I was just hoping that they could do more damage against you, and right now I'm actually kind of stuck because you're um, basically killing my guys uh, round after round, wave after wave, and I don't really know what to do. I mean, there you go, you're just absolutely mauling my riflemen apart. It's just absolutely surprising me. My medics can't even get in there because you keep on selecting to kill them. So right now I'm stuck. I have no clue what to do. Um, however, just in hindsight, looking back at this, I think what might have been a good investment might have been even snipers to try and take out your your guys. Yeah, and here's where you detect the vamp half track um, over on the squad that killed that engineer that was running around, and you just happened to find it out from cover. You were actually a decent distance away. It's something to remember. It doesn't. You don't actually have to get all that close. The kind of funny thing is, I mean, I just had two two uh, riflemen right there and they're hitting your uh, back armor yeah it took quite a while to actually take it out um, did you not realize that I was attacking you there I didn't realize it until it was too late I was focused more on on that center push outwards I think what it might have been uh, I think you might have been actually okay if you if you realized that and got it out in the nick of time I believe it could have survived that little onslaught there yeah, the arty strike on my base didn't help my attention span either, though. Ha ha ha. That's why there's so many craters. Um, as I was saying just a minute ago, I wasn't exactly sure what to do. Uh, my plan was actually to bombard Ryan's base, possibly get off a few lucky shots on his retreating squads, but more so possibly destroying his base structures to set him back, really. Yeah, and it's one of the things about the Panther base structures. They're huge, and so Artie hits them regularly. Um, here we see, uh, you know, your Thompson Rangers running up here. They're, they're coming right up on this MP44 squad. It's a little weak, but, uh, you know, relatively speaking, holding up pretty well. Ah, oh, man. It's just painful for me to look at it. Just the Ranger squad with their Thompsons getting absolutely shredded like that. It's really painful for me for me to see. Honestly, the uh, G43 squad probably had more to do with that than the uh, MP44 squad did, but the MP44 was there just to kind of tank it through. And at this point, I'm going, okay, he's got Rangers. I haven't even seen Stickies yet. I'm not even really worried about Stickies. I'm getting rid of this damn artillery piece because it's kind of pissing me off. <laughs> God, this is the thing about Ryan yet again. Just uh, He's too aggressive. He's too aggressive, in my opinion. But then again, he can't ever be too aggressive. And the only thing I can counter this with, because Ryan is spot on, I don't even have stickies. Because Ryan has hardly even had vehicles at all, so I wasn't really expecting it. Perhaps I should have expected it by this point in the game. That is why I was getting a bit of Rangers, uh, mixing them in with the Thompsons a little bit. But the Rangers coming out with their two initial bazookas, hopefully was meant to be enough to counter these Panzers. Uh, the Panzer IV anyway. So two Ranger squads out, however lucky they will be, we'll have to see, because Ryan is a bit down on his health at the moment on that Panzer IV. Yeah, and we've got your machine gun shooting uh, futilely at it in the whole process. Your uh, your fire up kind of hurt you there a little bit. I feel like you uh, you could have got gotten around the back a little easier, but um, you know, in the meantime, I'm really focusing on this infantry battle. I'm trying to maintain what territory I have because resources are so important at this point. <laughs> you barely have any territory, and this is the funny thing about it. I mean, you have, um, I have actually most of the territory on the map, but I'm kind of, kind of deprived in terms of manpower. I mean, I have so many riflemen on the field, I have so many rangers, I've actually quite a lot of fuel, 276, but it's just my huge investment into infantry really set me back because of all that uh, manpower that you know, I had to require for that. Obviously, the Rangers coming in at 400 manpower each. I got two of those. Those are going to cost a lot. Well, and you've got the upkeep associated with your uh, your medic tent producing more rifle squads as they were coming down. And all those things mixing in, of course. But we have the small engagement on the on just basically my front, a Vet 3 defensive um, 
sort of vet on Ryan's Panzer Grenadiers with the MP44s. So I can't even get close to those things. So those are going to be so hard to kill, especially with those that uh, triple veterancy on the defense. Yeah, and I'm I'm really focusing on uh, trying to uh, regain my capping power and put more of an infantry presence on the field as a whole. I do have this AT half track down here, so I'm not so worried about light vehicles because between that and uh, the AT grenades that I have, I can finish off pretty much anything light that you've got. Um, I can probably even take out a decent chunk of uh, you know armor with the way that the infantry battles are working out. I mean, at this moment, what am I supposed to uh, do? Considering I only have 150 manpower, and I've got a whole bunch of infantry, I've got a T-17, what am I supposed to do to combat you? Yeah, and I, I threw that AT grenade, which is what did damage to that T-17. Again, it hits the hull of the vehicles now instead of landing on the ground. So handy. Um, makes a huge difference in how you can um, use them in general. Um, and allows me to, to knock that T-17 down, uh, you know, continue capping and, and kind of moving around the map a little bit here. Oh, that was absolutely crazy. That was just like, a, just a little bit below half health and destroyed in one shot. That is, that is just painful for me to see right there. And this is Krebs, not happy at my unit preservation. <laughs> it's just so difficult to kill them. Just every time I was throwing my riflemen at you, bringing my, even my rangers, I was thinking, okay, maybe my rangers could at least do something against you with their Thompsons, but I mean, you were just absolutely mauling me. I couldn't even kill your guys, especially those Vet 3 defensive um, Panzer Grenadiers. I can't even get near them, for one, because they have the MP44s on them, so they are just so difficult to kill. I'm just absolutely, absolutely just frustrating me, I would say. It's something I found when I first started playing Panzer Elite is that um, by and large it feels, you know, when you're playing them, it feels like they're fragile. When you're playing against them, it feels like they're invincible. And and it just, for whatever reason, it it doesn't, it doesn't mesh well. <laughs> it's quite contrary, that's for sure. Um, in my perspective, uh, playing after the Americans is just, as I keep on stressing, so difficult to even take down one guy. So, as I was saying earlier, just hindsight, I think a a, a few snipers, WIC, would have helped a lot. At least I could get some instant kills on your Panzer Grenadiers, forcing them to retreat. Would have helped so much, considering you don't even have any anything much except Panzer Grenadiers. That's been something I've been seeing in, in auto match um, quite a bit these days. Is a lot more in regards to uh, WSC play against Panzer Elite. Well, the only thing I can do at the moment is just do what do what little I can. Really, I mean, I lost the howitzer. I lost um, quite a bit of my infantry. You're just moving in straight on into my <laughs> my rangers, and uh, man, I'm telling you, this is. This is just so hard to even uh, to even just watch, really. Well, and, and you know, at this point, I believe that I've also um, I can't remember whether I've gotten Group Zeal at this point, but I do Our have Vet Sarge collapsing. up, which uh, increases my uh, veterancy gain rate and uh, and reduces my incoming suppression. Um, you're seeing Scorched Earth actually being used on this point over here and booby traps i'm laying booby traps at this point i'm figuring why not um you know as far as all of the infantry and everything that we've had going back and forth i'm in a fairly decent position for taking out armor um i'm getting a martyr up and in combination with the at half track the martyr and the at grenades i'm not really worried about armor um i was kind of worried that he was working on a tank depot but um, again, that comes down to that uh, kind of a newbie mistake of always assuming that your opponent has unlimited resources. <laughs> so basically, you're you're um, sailing on on clear waters. <laughs> it's nice and easy for you. Whilst if we just look at my riflemen in my base, these guys are really just down to one, two guys in each in each squad. I am so low on manpower. I've only got 250 at the moment. Just trying to think of what I can do. I do have the WSC with the snipers, but it is kind of late. Ryan is just, <laughs> with his Scorched Earth, I have absolutely no clue what he was doing in terms of uh, doctrinal abilities. Um, but after all, he does have the booby trap, so he has gone for that Scorched Earth, and hence we see the fuel point absolutely disabled there. 
this is just it's just too much for me we see a complete reversal of the map what i had in terms of lots of points against ryan's a uh, few points has been totally reversed i'm basically on the back foot yeah and i i think that came down to that infantry battle swaying in my favor due to the vet uh, you know i've got a g43 squad that's got 47 kills um I've got uh, an MP44 squad that's up to 31. And if anybody was sitting over there looking at that bar um, hanging above the house over towards the east side of the map, that actually went on my new G43 squad that I, I pump, pumped out. So it did get picked up, I promise. I, um, I, I didn't forget about it. I just couldn't get over to it for so long. <laughs> I didn't actually manage to see that anyway, <laughs> so, but it's cool to see that you uh, did manage to pick that up, even though it was my gun, but uh, in terms of my army at the moment, I've only got two snipers, and, you know, I believe I did actually do quite a bit of damage against your Panzer Grenadiers, because the snipers are exactly what I needed against you. Two, per volley, I could take out two of your guys, and basically effectively eliminate half of your fighting power by from each squad that's basically gonna have to force you to retreat before you lose them um, the only unfortunate thing about it is that they're way too late 35 minutes basically into the game and you know just bring out those snipers you just got a scout car as well and you know it's, it's really putting a toll on me but then again having these snipers together in combined arms with my rangers as long as they have the bazookas it's going to put a lot of hassle and a harder time for your scout car to even get in in there yeah it's definitely going to be tough for me to get close and and the real trick is uh, you know getting the retreats off at the right times um along the way and trying to make sure that i don't take too much in the way of damage um, if I can get the, the rangers pushed back a little bit, is what I'm thinking at this point, I can finally get to those freaking snipers, which is why I built the scout car to begin with. <laughs> but the scout car is still having quite a difficult time to even um, thinking about getting in there. Yeah, that's my brain. That's not so much the scout car. I'm like, uh, I don't know where to move here. <laughs> After all, you're so aggressive, but when it comes to just chasing down my snipers, oh, you're kind of cautious. Yeah, it, it kind of goofy. It's just one of those things that, that happens. Well, this is pretty much the last one of the last fights that are, uh, we're going to see in this game. Just because, you know, I, I've basically lost all the points. Um, Ryan has such a heavy defense on the right-hand side. I mean, I could easily go onto the western side, but Ryan has so many infantry. Um, he has such a mobile army, he could easily relocate. And the fact that he has a Panzer IV out, it was really just making my day so much worse whilst Ryan is on clear waters I am sailing through stormy seas yeah and I'm, I'm learning my lesson here with Panzer IV is about locking them down in places they probably shouldn't be like near your base uh, <laughs> and so I don't and I, I keep backing it up and uh, you know I'm really just looking for an opportunity to get in there um, get those snipers taken out uh, and of course I don't have the ability to use a cloak kitten because I, I chose Scorched Earth. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the uh, kitten's ability in Scorched Earth because that incendiary trap is, uh, it's not bad, it's just not great. Exactly, I mean you can't get the, you can't get the cam camouflage because you didn't go for the Luftwaffe, but um, you know the Panzer IV is going to be such a such an amazing uh, unit for you, especially considering I have no vehicles. Since it's a anti-infantry sort of tank, it's it's absolutely decimating these rangers. I'm just trying to get in there, but the fact that you're retreating them is just so annoying. I can't even destroy anything. You know, at this point in the game, I'm. Is there really anything I can do? You know, I've got my rangers, I've got the snipers. It's all going to come down to maneuverability, um, possibly you making mistakes if I can actually make a comeback. Yeah, and I, I brought in a Hummel, which is firing right now, and uh, and that's more just to to create, a, you know, more of a constant manpower drain on you, and, and just to keep working at uh, pinning you back into your base like you tried to do to me. <laughs> so this is what I was saying in my previous games that although yes I have beaten Ryan a few times he is actually what my butt various amounts of times probably more so than the times that I have beaten him and this is just one of the, the sour games that I have had to go through and to just basically hold out 
as best as I can, despite the oncoming artillery, despite the oncoming tanks and all these shells and all the bullet fire and all this this combination of arms. It's just I I can't do anything really. <laughs> I think I think it's just when when I have to throw in the towel and just raise my white flag and you know put put my hands up in the air. Yeah, and that, that G43 squad was really, uh, you know, key. The G43 and the MP44 is working together. Those two squads that have the most kills, my G43 is up to 50 and the MP44 is up to 31 or so. Um, you know, just those two squads alone put such a dent in your manpower. And the ability to keep that running really helped. There were opportunities for you to really take that over. Um, and, and again, the uh, you know the booby traps are there just to stress your micro at this point in the game. I'm not really expecting to get a lot of kills from them, but it's going to cause you to constantly be watching every time you take a point. Um, and I've got them strewn across, you know, in various spots. Um, I'm setting up, you know, for flanks coming into the center here. Um, and I, I have this bad habit, I, again, uh, for all you people who are watching, my micro is bad. And I know this, and it's one of the things that, um, you know, I'm constantly working on. I kind of use a cheese here and go for a little sector already. I don't get a whole lot out of it. Um, but again, it's a deterrent. I'm trying to keep him from being able to push up on this territory. You're just basically trying to destroy my uh, psyche. I mean, you're just trying to make me give up. Oh, no, and I, th I think pretty much this is where I have to give up. Losing two two rangers right there is just n not an acceptable loss at the moment. Oh, and a sniper. Right there trying to snipe dad in on that. I think this is just where I... <laughs> okay, enough. This is this is enough of destroying my uh, ego, destroying my, uh, <laughs> my personality. Yeah, and, uh, you know, and again, it's one of those things we play f uh, with each other because uh, we seem to be fairly even matched. Um, you know, we both make mistakes. We both ma make uh, bad choices involved. But all in all, uh, you know, it's it's a lot of fun just to play between each other um, and just really have a good time with uh, the, uh, the process of... Uh, kind of getting in being able to look at the games being able to mess with mechanics and play with things and we we specifically set out knowing that the other person was going to be using a vampire half track sometime during the game it was just to uh find well i mean the more practice you get with something the better you'll become obviously um it's just to find out if there's any sort of viable strategies with the vampire half track and yes there is viable strategies after all uh, there is no fuel cost on those vampire half tracks anymore. They can camouflage, so really we just have to see their potential um, abused and just just see just see good players use them as best as possible. So we were just trying to experiment with the vampire half track at its best, and you know what? It was working quite a bit. If Ryan did move it up a bit forward and capture one of my earlier points with it, he could all have severely hampered my resources even further. But anyway, I think that's pretty much it for our little casual game that I got destroyed in. Um, any other closing comments, Ryan? No, absolutely not. I had a great time playing. Okay, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little replay about the Vampire Half Track. And a little sending off message. Go try out the Vampire Half Track and make the most out of it. See what you can do. Anyway, this is Krebs Cool. And, and send us replays. And send us the replays about it. Maybe we'll get on to it. But anyway, this is Krebs Kuhu and Ryan. We will catch you guys later.